All right, listen up. We really got to talk about how overpowered villager trading is. I mean, they get you maxed out armor, the best food in the game, and easy building materials. <laughs> it is genuinely mind-blowing how much villager trading breaks the game. But I'm sure you guys already know that. Villager trading has been in the game for years. But if you want to set up a proper trading area, you got to go through a bunch of complicated, annoying BS to set it up. It's just not worth the struggle. Or is it? Well, I'm here to show you otherwise. I've done my research. I've grinded out trading halls in survival and hardcore. I've sat down and read the entire villager wiki page. Over 14,000 words. Yeah, I don't go outside. And I'm here to show you guys how to make all this a lot simpler. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Seven quick tips for making villager trading easy. Secure a couple villagers as soon as you find them. This might sound kind of silly, but you'd be surprised how many people just don't do this and then they have a hard time getting villagers. Like, yeah, geez, I wonder why. But really though, these villagers do not know how to stay alive. If you're by a village or planning on spending any time near one, you gotta get these guys secured. Every time you let nighttime pass, these guys are practically tossing themselves off of cliffs with how easily they die. All you really gotta do is run through a village at night and just block up all the doors. They're all in their bed sleeping, so you don't need to worry about losing any. Then by the time you're ready to start breeding and trading, come back and crack these bad boys open. Okay, so we've got a supply of villagers reserved in storage until we need them. That's cool and all, but what do we actually need from the villagers? What trades are best? Plan out what trades will be the most important to you. Yeah, so like obviously having, you know, 100 million villagers is gonna give you the most benefits, but most of us don't have the time to set up every trade for every single profession. You definitely won't catch me sitting around doing that. Instead, I recommend taking a look through the wiki and seeing what trades are most important to you. But in the off chance that you don't wanna be a wiki reading nerd like myself, here is what I think are the most essential trades. I mean, first of all, obviously you gotta have a like librarian for the enchanted books. Mending is an easy first pick, but beyond that, I would recommend fortune, unbreaking, efficiency, and looting. Masons are great if you're doing a lot of building. Obviously, brick and quartz are very hard to farm, as well as like terracotta and stuff like that. It's really nice to have. Armors and toolsmiths are going to be giving you enchanted diamond armor and tools, which is already pretty fantastic, but don't forget, you can always grindstone off the enchants to swap with the ones from your books. And then you'll also need some guys that can take in raw materials and give you emeralds. If you have melon and pumpkin farms, I'd recommend a farmer. If you got an iron farm, I'd recommend an armorer. If you got a lot of wood, I'd recommend a fletcher. And if you got a lot of stone, then a mason is probably best. Here is a uh, visual map of how all this is gonna work. Of course, you can make any changes you want depending on what you got on hand, but this is generally what I follow when I set up villager trading. But of course, none of this is gonna be possible if you can't even get the villagers out of their village into your base. That often drives people crazy with how annoying it is. Let's check out how to optimize it. Use these tricks to transport villagers easily. I've got these neat little tricks that I've developed over the many hours I've spent hauling these guys around. It's never gonna be a fun time, but if you follow these steps, it should be pretty painless. So we've got these blocked up houses, right? And we gotta get the villager out. Well, try something like this. Break two bottom blocks, put in some fences, then break the top two. Also break the bed and anything else inside the house. You're gonna want a two by two door hole and at least a two by two area Area inside to work with. If you're going to be moving these guys over water, then just toss them the boat. Once the villager is in, you can hop in, open the fences, and you're on your way. Just keep in mind that you cannot travel up from a path block to a full block because, you know, the little one pixel height difference. So either avoid the path blocks entirely or bring a shovel to make more. If you're using mine carts, you can set a little spinny spinny thing going on over here, get the villager in, and then you're all set to ship them off. Okay, that was easy enough. But some of you guys might know that the hard part is moving these guys from a boat to a minecart. For this, I like to use a combination of a piston pusher and the same minecart wheel little spinny spinny setup from before. All you gotta do is sail up to the edge, hop out, place a redstone block to push the piston up, seal in the villager, and break the boat. Eventually, they'll hop in the cart and you're all set. 
In order to get infinite villagers, we'll need to create a breeder and understand how breeding mechanics work. Right, so these guys are a little bit picky. They won't just breed whenever, unfortunately. They need a few specific conditions. Villagers will breed when they are willing. Uh, more on that later. They have enough beds, plus at least one available for the baby, with the beds having two empty blocks above them. The villager population has to be below its cap, so you can't have too many guys nearby. Now, in order to make the villager willing, you need to give them enough food to have 12 food points each. A stack of bread gives you four, and a stack of carrot, beetroot, or potato gives you one. Also, in Bedrock, you can actually make the villagers willing upon trading with them for the first time, so that's pretty cool, I guess, if you're on Bedrock. Okay, so yeah, hopefully that made sense. If not, though, no worries. I've got a simple breeder design right here that I'll walk you guys through, which should meet all those breeding requirements. So all you're gonna need for this are these materials right here, as you can see, it's really not very much. Starting off, just go ahead and put that redstone block anywhere. Two four high pillars of glass on either side. And then add two more smaller pillars of glass that are two blocks tall. Put a trap door on either side here. A slab on top of all the glass. Put your fence in the middle and then go ahead and take your four beds and just right click on top of the slab to kind of arrange them in this circle pattern like that. Four more trap doors right there and then four more carpets on the corners like so. Gonna do Dig out one, two, three, four blocks in a line going back from the redstone block, including the one underneath it. And then on the fifth block back here, you're gonna put a button, two powered rails, a regular rail, one more powered rail underneath the redstone block, one more powered rail on the opposite side here, put one regular rail on top of the redstone block, and then one more rail over there. Then you can break this rail and add it onto the end just like that. Place your minecart in the corner here, and now you are all set. Your villagers will be loaded into the top like so. When they breed, their babies will be forcefully ejected down into the ground and land on the redstone block. The trap doors are going to prevent them from escaping. But of course, we still have access into the chamber here in case you need to get rid of any villagers or anything like that. And once they've grown up, you can hit the button on that minecart to scoop one up and send it on its way. To really get the most out of our villagers, we should zombify and cure them a few times each. I'm gonna be real with you guys, I don't usually do this, partially because it takes forever, but also I feel like it's just a little bit too overpowered for how I like to play the game. But we're not here to explore the nuances of Minecraft ethics, we're here to break the game, so let's get into it. You'll need a good bit of gold for this, plus apples and weakness potions or weakness arrows, and I know that's a big material cost, but trust me, the payoff is immense. Here's my design for easy zombifying and curing. Villagers come out of the breeder, they get stopped here, and in order to get the discounts, we have to give them a profession first. So, pull up your list of trades, and be sure to lock in the right one. All you gotta do is trade with them once. Then they keep moving, they get killed by the zombie with a sword, and then brought over here, where I can stuff them full of apples and potions. Once they're cured, we can ship them off to the trading hall, which will be building in the next tip. However, you might want to kill and cure them more than once. In that case, just add in a little track switcher like so. Villagers will need up to three rounds of killing and curing before they've got the lowest possible trades. So you can always bring them back to the zombie and start the whole process over again. Okay, we've optimized villager locating, breeding, and curing. Now all that's left is to line them up and farm those trades. For a simple but effective trading hall, follow a design like this. It's generally the simplest to have them all lined up in a row, but you can get creative with your villager placement. What's important here is that they get loaded into their chamber from the top, their workstation is out in front of them, and there's no empty air blocks anywhere around them. Why can't you have any air blocks, you might be wondering? Well, when you get them in place, you gotta break the minecart, and if they have an empty spot nearby, they're probably gonna warp to it. It's really annoying, but just put down some filler blocks and you'll be good. Let's try it out with one of our cured villagers. If you're on Java, you can use the hitbox view, F3 and B, to break the minecart more easily. So yeah, all you really gotta do is repeat this process, covering up the villager hole each time as you lay down more track, and you're all set. 
In the previous six tips, I've taken you through the entire process of setting up an easy and efficient trading hall, and I hope they were useful. For our last tip, let's run through some fun and useful facts about villagers that just might help you out a lot. Number one, villagers actually have eight inventory slots. They collect crops such as wheat and potatoes, and when they die, these items are lost. Number two, if your villagers aren't farming or picking up any items for breeding, double check that you don't have the mob griefing game rule set to false. Number three, villagers also have four hidden armor slots. Using a dispenser, you can put mob heads, elytra, carved pumpkins, or even armor on villagers, and their effects will actually apply. Like, check this out. Here I've got an unarmored villager and a full protection for netherite armor villager. I'm going to start hitting them with an iron sword, and you can clearly see the difference here in the number of swings they can take. Number four, villagers can open all wooden doors and can even pathfind to objects behind the doors. Number five, if your villager is sitting near a workstation but just won't pick up the trade, you might have to break all the other workstation blocks in the area. Sometimes villagers will see a workstation and continually try to pathfind to it, ignoring all other options. Number six, using iron bars can actually increase the uh, zombification cure speed by up to 4.2% if you got enough bars around the villager as is being cured. It's a neat little trick you can use to optimize things a little bit, but the percent bonus is not that high. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. By sticking around, you're helping out my channel a lot, and I really appreciate that. If you've got any ideas for future videos, drop them down in the comments. I love getting suggestions. Until next time, guys, this has been Leon, and I'll see you all in the next 7 Quick Tips video.